heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson Well, hey, everybody, this is Jeannie Robertson, and we are going to have a heck of a lot of fun. Here comes Tony, because I just ran in here from the kitchen. I was getting a cup of coffee. Thank you, Tony. I said, stir it, bring it. I'm gone. But what we're this is amazing because I'm on my back porch, live from the back porch. I'm not in a car driving through Georgia after leaving Jane Tucker's house. I'm not in the car after I left a great show at the, the people couldn't have been nicer last Friday night at the Maddie Kelly Performing Arts Center in Niceville. Thanks to all of y'all. And I'm not broadcasting this show as I was this time last week in a car with Keith, who was trying to drive me all over the South to avoid the storms. And we were in Atlanta trying to get through the traffic. So I'm back on the back porch. And as you probably noticed, we've changed some things around because Jane Tucker has been here this week. And so we're moving furniture and clothes and everything all around the house. We are experimenting. Let me do some logistics because we have an exciting special guest coming up. And I uh, know many of y'all are excited as I am about Liz Curtis Higgs being here. But let me just give you a couple of logistical things. McCall Bohannon won uh, the book on Thursday night during the pop-up, and I think she's already contacted Tony, not yet. Well, she needs to do that if she wants to get that. Uh, last week, we gave away four tickets for the Niceful show. It's very simple, and we're going to give away two today, and we gave away two Thursday night for the show that's coming Saturday, not today, a week from today, in Tallahassee, Florida. It's so simple. And if you can go to the show, please enter to win the free tickets. But if you can't go to the show, please don't enter. We don't send you the tickets. You show your license when you get there. And we've tried this once before. And people from Boise entered for a show in Orlando and won them and said, well, I knew I couldn't go anyway. But I just wanted to see if I could win. Don't do that. So if you can go to the sh show in Tallahassee next week, that would be, I think, the 6th on a Saturday um, at 7.30 at the Moon Theater. Then please go to Jeannie. There's no I in Jeannie. Laughs. I think it's going to be on our screen here in a second. Dot com. No credit card. Nothing. Just like signing up at a luncheon to win the door prize. And they'll give you that. You can sign up for that information. Um, Neil Steele's show yesterday went beautifully. We were in the back seat of a car last week trying to do that. It worked. And all this week, we've been flea marketing and buying, I would not say, Jane, cheap stuff, but maybe I would. But anything that we could find, Norma Rose went with us a couple of days. Um, the chair at the Niceful show, the rocking chair, was won by Debbie Burns. And of course, anytime that I'm in the uh, rocking chair because of the previously broken femur, it, you can sign up to win that if you're in the show. And uh, we'll be doing that in Tallahassee also. We have, um, I think that's about it. We have a really special guest, a friend of mine for years, at least 30 years, uh, probably longer, Liz Curtis Higgs from Louisville, Kentucky. She's not on the porch. She's in Louisville, Kentucky, but she's going to join us by way of the big screen. So to get things going, will you please welcome Liz Curtis Higgs. Yay! <laughs> hey, Liz, how are you? Oh, sister, I'm wonderful. Thank you. What fun. I can't even believe it. We met in 1987. Is that so it? That, yeah, 87. Are okay. you adding your head? <laughs> 97, 2007, <laughs> I have well, to, to say, 17, 34 years. My word. Well, um, I don't know if you remember it, but we were both humorous speakers. I know you had been in the radio for years, and now you had really moved into being what I am, a humorist, um, not a comedian, a humorist, big difference. And yeah. uh, But you were in charge of a program for the National Speakers Association, I believe it was called VOE Voices of Experience. Correct. And you asked me at the convention if I would 
do a program. And I said, well, sure. And it was going to be a long program. And then you said, can we do it now at the convention? And I remember saying, Liz, I am so tired at this convention because you just, it just wears you out talking and talking and talking. And uh, I said, if you will let me wait two weeks, I will fly to your house at your convenience and do it there. And, and you said, great. And I stayed in your house and I learned so many things. One of which was that you were working about the same way I was out of a spare bedroom. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but we, you said, uh, we're going to, the children were uh, little pity people and they were, and they from were. radio, you said, we're going to get in this little closet over here. <laughs> you talk about long legs and, and larger body than you are now. And we got in that closet and cut the questions. Do you remember that? I, of course I do. And that was so far back. It was on a reel to reel tape machine. Okay. Oh, we, no. we are. When I edited it, I edited it with a razor blade and a splicing block where you would literally cut the tape and tape it back together. Crazy times. And not good, with the tape over it. And you tell me something else that I've never forgotten, uh, especially because a lot of people who come here for this afternoon for this uh, port show will go to dinner the night before here. And um, you, I was telling you several funny stories the night before. And you said, Jeannie, stop. Don't tell me anymore. I've learned this from radio. I laugh when I hear them, but the spontaneity is gone when you say it on the on the taping. I, I've always remembered that. Don't try to be so funny at lunch or dinner the night before that you can't tell those stories the next day. Absolutely. Is that a radio rule? Uh, well, it, it's my, it's a Lizzie rule for sure. But you taught me to try out stories at the dinner table, whether it's with your family or out with friends or whatever, as you're building a story before you've gone on the platform with it, it is fantastic to try it out there because you just kind of slide into it. They don't know you're trying out material. So smart. <laughs> well, you know, we all did those things. The other thing I remember from the trip is I was so impressed because you were going into writing oh. and I had a phobia about writing to which almost extends. I, I mean, I have a new book out, but that really almost extends to today about, and yet you were jumping into <laughs> writing. You had written, I believe, does dinner in a bucket count? Yeah, 1992. <laughs> that was your first when I, it was coming out. And then other books. And of course, now you've done 37. But you also had, y'all had bought this farm and you had a barn and y'all had all this stuff that you were selling from huge paper clips this big on and on. I said, well, this woman is, I've never met anybody like that. And then I went to bed. And then I thought of something else. You said, I want to do a few things. I remember this like it was yesterday. So if you don't, I'm sorry. But you said, I've got some things to do. And so I went on. And then I thought of something I wanted to tell you. So I tippy toed down the hall and stood at the door. And you busy woman, you were playing solitaire. <laughs> at the, <laughs> and I tippy toed back to my room. Because you, you were winding down the day. And you were putting those cards in lines. I loved it. So you now, you just went in another direction. I know that you went this way more toward God because mm. you have written, studied. I started to say you wrote your own Bible. That's not true. But no. why don't we start the show off by giving away, because you've been generous enough to give away five copies of your, do you have a copy of it there? Bad, mm. bad women of the Bible, the bad girls of the Bible. Bible yeah. Okay. It's Seller. So Why? this right here, these are people who have sent their names in and they love you and this is it. So this is the first person that's going to win a copy of Bad Girls of the Bible and it is Jan Howard. I know Jan writes every week. It's hard time deciding what tape to order. I finally went fast with Amazon. Now she gets one she hadn't ordered maybe. But if she has, can she let Tony know to whom you would like for you to sign that book. Mm -hmm. Okay, she'll do that. That's fine. Okay, we'll start off by that one. Let's give another one right here. One of Liz's books right here. And this book is 
going to go to Paulette Patterson from Spring, Texas. Paulette, if you will write Tony at JeannieRobertson.com and just tell her to whom you would like Liz to autograph the book, we'll get all of that straight and get it to her. And now I want to show you one of your biggest fans. Because I have a few of your books right over here. <laughs> Can you possibly <laughs> pick them up on camera, Patrick? Here's your first one. Does dinner in a bucket count? And then you just go on and on down the list. And I have all of your parables you did for children. And can people still get these parables oh, yeah, for children? Sure. Because yeah. look at the, you had every season. This was the pumpkin parable. And I mean, they're wonderful books, but I go, and then you have the whole parable treasury and mixed signals that took place up in Abington or yeah, somewhere. I mean, Virginia sure did. So, and these <laughs> go on and on like this one is help. I'm laughing and I can't get up. And so what about all of these? You have 37 books. You go to Scotland often. To, I do. I'm embarrassed to, to tell you. I Okay. Well, I've been there 20 times. Is that insane? I mean, some people go to Florida. I go to Scotland. Um, it started, Bill and I went there um, for our 10th anniversary, and we're going to have our 35th anniversary in March. So um, we went there on our 10th just because it's a place we love the music from there, the Celtic music and, and just the culture. And it's such a beautiful country. And I went there and I just fell in love, fell in love with the country. I was working on my first historical novel. So that was 1995. Yeah. That novel didn't come out till 2003. And I spent those eight years speaking, of course, writing other books, but working on this historical novel set in 1789. And so it just became a place in my heart. You know, everybody's got one somewhere they love to go. For me, it's Scotland. After a while, when the book started coming out, then I started. I started leading tours there for my readers. Oh, my word. Did we have fun? You know, 37 women on a bus traveling Scotland. It was a hoot. It was. Will you have more coming out from Scotland? Will you continue that? Or do you want to switch and go to no. Auburn, no. Alabama? You no. Know? no. <laughs> Bill said, because I bought so many books about Scotland and invested so much time and money on Scottish everything, um, I'm not allowed to switch locations. So yes, I'll be writing another novel set in Scotland. Don't know about the tour. Uh, touring has gotten a little weird the last uh, 12, 14 months, but um, but I am going to write there right in my head anyway. So I've always got projects going. I've always got books going. I've always got um, live casts going. You have been amazing in this last 12 months, having fun on Facebook every Saturday and on YouTube. I just love it. But don't you do a Monday morning uh, rise and shine, 10 minutes or so? Tell us, what is that? Well, in 2020, um, I, I went to Tuesdays at 12, uh, first thing Friday, and Sunday nights at 7. I had so much stuff going on online. Because you get this, Jeannie, I was missing being with audiences. I missed teaching. I missed speaking. I missed hearing people laugh. It was killing me. <laughs> so. Be terrible. So we did the Facebook Live stuff this year. As I begin to step out and speak again, I've got four dates in April, um, four weekends in April. Can't believe it. I hope I remember how to do it. How'd you do last uh, weekend in in Florida? Did that work out for you? You remembered well, what to do? Florida was fine, but I spoke in Charleston, and it was pay for view in December, and we thought it was going to just be a hit. And then we had we sold plenty of tickets. So. But in the audience, Jane, you were sitting there. Jane Tucker's here this week. We had 43 people. And they were spread everywhere. And they were only allowed to sell a few tickets. But, you know, I think we're used to hearing that laughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I found it excruciatingly painful. I hope the people didn't realize. But I just was searching for to hear that. Is it's it the reverberation or whatever it is that was to you used so to hear? We're used to it. The laugh here, a big laugh here, a small laugh here. And when you don't get any of that feedback, ooh, baby, it's tough. It's That's tough. when I move into motivational speaking very quickly. So, <laughs> so <I don't laughs> go from humor and God to motivation. <laughs> whatever. You know, we're gonna we're just gonna shift it. But oh yeah, it is hard. So um 
these will be live and big audiences in April. Thank goodness for that. But oddly, when you're on Facebook and you can't hear anybody laughing, I still hear them in my head. So it doesn't seem to trip me up as much as when I'm looking at a group of people in masks and you can't even tell if they're smiling out there. That was it. the part for me. But uh, but anyway, yeah, so this year it's Rise and Shine Mondays, just about, well, they're supposed to be five or six minutes. Inevitably, they're more like 10 or 12. I bet you can identify with that. I can, I can do that. Um, now, how does a person, if they want to hear you and, and see that, how do they get you on Monday morning, Rise and Shine? It's just facebook.com forward slash and then my name, Liz Curtis Higgs, just all one grit and you're there <laughs> 8 a.m. And then they, they stay on there afterwards. So for my West Coast friends who aren't even up yet, aren't rising and shining yet, I'll be there when you get up. I promise. So okay. it's, it's just a fun well, way to connect. I started in March at the invitation of a man named Neil Steele being on radio every Friday. And I, I, I thought I just can't do this and come up with something funny all the time. But um, it's I don't know how radio people do it. You were on radio and then this. But I to not hear anybody coming back except people in the studio. It's lonesome. To <laughs> me <sometimes. laughs> so I go ahead and laugh anyway. <laughs> All right, I have to tell you, the one of the words that you use all the time, and by the way, when you say that you started speaking, I don't usually have. I expect this is the first time y'all have seen me with some sort of printed notes, but I just have to tell you this. You've sold 37 books and written 37, sold a, more, a whole lot more. No, Patrick <laughs> sold 37 of his books, so he's... <laughs> But 5 million copies in print, bad girls of the Bible, really bad girls of the Bible, slightly bad girls of the Bible. But you also have given um, speakers sometimes exaggerate, but I know that you don't. But you have spoken at over 1,800 events. Now, now you try to, pe people have to realize when you go to an event, that takes a day, it takes a day to get home. Your own site, you do what the client needs you to do if you something extra. But to do 1,800 conferences in all 50 states and 15 foreign countries. So you've been a little bit busy. And then you've been an award-winning columnist for Today's Christian Women. You've done that, did that for a decade. You're on this. You're on Woman Alive. You've been interviewed by everybody. You have had more than 4,500 churches use your video Bible study. Now, my niece, Jeannie, named after me, yes. was in Germany with her husband. He was in business. And, of course, they established their church there. And then she got in touch with me by the way that she did at that time and said, Aunt Jeannie, do you know a woman named Liz Curtis Higgs? That's our, San our Sunday school for the next so many months or whatever in Germany. And I said, well, I'll be darned. Liz has gone in another direction here and is, and is succeeding. However, you coined the phrase that people kept telling you. They called you an encourager. Hmm. And um, you've had to have some encouragement to yourself personally lately. Uh, and I let me just put it to you this way. And if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. But you and I both know I ran it by you a little bit or I wouldn't do this to you. But is that where'd you get that wig you got on? <laughs> and why do you have that gorgeous wig? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny. Um, I had was it was diagnosed with cancer back in 2017. That wasn't the funny part. Um, but you and I, Jeannie, we look for humor in everything, even challenging things, because it's what gets you through it. And so I was prepared once I started chemotherapy. They said, you will lose your hair in 12 days. I mean, they were so specific. And on the 12th day, I was in Hawaii speaking. And so I... <laughs> Uh, I, <laughs> I had taken a wig with me, so I was kind of ready. Uh, but what I wasn't prepared for, I spoke a couple times and then the 12th day hit. I'm in the shower at a hotel and all my hair came off at once. Now, I never had a whole lot, you know, so it's my own fault. As a child, I prayed to be thin and I should have been more specific. But anyway, 
<laughs> so I, I didn't ever have a whole lot of hair, but what I had just slithered. It was the weirdest sensation came right, slithered down my body. Now I had a small animal in the drain and I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this huge mound of hair that the, that the cleaning up staff isn't going to worry about what happened in this room anyway. So then I had to wear the wig. So I want you to picture this. The group saw me with one kind of hair and then another kind of hair. It was a little different. <laughs> But um, yeah, I left my hair in Honolulu. I sure did. There must be a song like that. And uh, and so it so looks it, great. I'm going to tell you right now. They're so fun. I get them online. Yes, I do. Um, they're all the same color. Um, glazed vanilla, which sounds like a good Krispy Kreme to me. Glazed vanilla. And so the same color. I have seven of them because seven heads are better than one. No. <laughs> um, You'll get this. I'm a scared to death that the style I like that feels the most like me, my color and my whatever, I'm scared to death they'll stop making them because they do. You know, they just discontinue them. So every time they go on sale, I buy another one. So you wear out? Up in the closet in here on little styrofoam heads. So I'm good to. <laughs> <laughs> See, my mind immediately thinks, okay, somebody breaks in her house opens the closet and there are these heads all looking back out at her. I see a story coming. It looks like but, silence of the lambs. What? Yeah. It's like silence of the yeah, lambs. Silence of the lambs. But you, you said something now and, and you mentioned it. You said you prayed to be thin and, and he got confused over where. Yeah. Should have been more specific. Girlfriend, you've lost a lot of weight. I have actually. And I'm grateful for that. You know, the thing is, I've always been a big woman. I'm still a big woman, but um, I had gained and gained. The road will kill you. I'm just going to say this. You are an amazing role model for all of us because you have kept your lovely figure all these years on the road. Didn't work that way for me. But after I survived cancer and I am cancer free, they call it no evidence of disease. It's the happy place. We love Ned around here. That's what they call him. Um, I decided if God still wanted me to be alive, then maybe I better take a little better care of the temple. And so, um, so I've been working on that for the last 18 months and feeling fantastic. So grateful. I've got two new knees, so I'm just a running, loving it. Do you, are you going to an exercise class? I'm going to get to everybody's questions, but are you exercising that way? Are you pushing back? Yeah, I am, uh, but not in a class. I do it downstairs. I've got my elliptical that I do 40 minutes on every day. And I get to binge watch my favorite show, The Great British Baking Show. Oh, Jeannie, have you ever watched that? <laughs> a baking show? <laughs> Tony, write that down. Watch a baking show. Maybe Great. You know I don't cook. I don't cook all. either. I do not cook either. Are you kidding? My idea of a recipe is everything from the left side of the fridge with chips on top. I have no idea how to cook. <laughs> it's do fun. you want to tell us how much you lost? How much did you lose? Do oh, you want I, to tell I, tell? I can. I'm don't not tell it. I shouldn't I, have asked it. No, don't that's tell okay. It. But you look good. I will. It's 152 pounds is what I've lost. Whoa, way to go, Liz. A whole person. <laughs> so, what'd you do with your old clothes? <laughs> All right, now these are questions asked by your yeah. fans. Okay, I and I can tell you that we may have some overlapping type things. And so if it if you see me throw a question down, I've just, we've already handled that. Okay. okay. This right. is, hi, Liz. I'm excited to learn more about you and your messages through Jeannie. I struggle with several characters in the Bible. Uh-oh, are you ready? I'm ready. Any suggestion on how to become more like Mary and less like Martha in Luke oh, in our oh, daily oh. life? Man, you've got to really know the Bible to answer this question. And I do. I love Martha. Okay, let me just say I'm far more of a Martha than a Mary. In my book, The Women of Easter, we talk about Mary and Martha and um, Martha is that go, 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 do, do, do girl. And Mary is the quiet one who sits and listens at the feet of Jesus. But you know what? He loved them both. So girl, do not worry about being more like Martha. Martha had stuff to do too. So she's good. Okay. Don't let me say otherwise. <laughs> Way to go. And that question came from, now you didn't win a prize here. Oh, her name is Mary Gray. Oh. But Mary, thanks for asking the question. Now you go in that barn. I'll roll in here and get another question out right now. And then we'll give some things away here before long. Okay. Kay Cook. Jeannie, I have a question for you. 
Ooh. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about those beautiful white chairs that you sometimes sit in. Where did you get them? I love the shape of the chairs, Kate Cook. Okay, you ask about the chairs. I did. I love those chairs. They just look like something you'd ought to lounge on because they were so, you know, different. Well, I we were antiquing with flea marketing like we did this week with my friend Jane Tucker, who's here, now, and Norma Rose, my bestest friend. And Jane said, I'm looking for two chairs. I saw these two clam chairs. They look like clams. Yes. And I just shouted across the whole store. I said, Jane, Jane, chairs over here. She did not even walk over to look at them. She looked from afar and turned and said to the, hey, I want the two chairs over here. So then I casually said, I liked them too. And she said, oh, then we start with that thing women do. Oh, oh, did you want them? Well, you can have them if you want to. I said, I don't want them. I don't have any way to get them on. And then you came up here, you covered yours in white, and you came up here and we were going to an antique store. And I said to you, have you ever seen another one of those chairs? And you said, I have not. And we walked in. You said, Jeannie, it was at Bella's. Jeannie, there's one of those chairs. So then about a month later, we found two more and we got those. We now have three. It's obscene, obscene. All right, you want to give another way, way another one of your books? Okay, let's go for it. We're doing Bad All Girls right. of the Bible, y'all. All right, Bad Girls of the Bible. Here we go. I'm going to pull this right out from this same stack. Come down here and see who we get. And it's a big book too, Liz, isn't it? It's a big book. You write big books. And it to read it. <laughs> you. Okay. Daryl Moore, who loves us from Wisconsin. D-A-R-Y-L Moore. He's a top fan. And Daryl, you have just won a copy autographed by Liz of the Bad Girls of the Bible. And if you will contact Tony at Tony at JeannieRobertson.com. Okay, now the next person is going to win. Liz, you know, I talked to you about this a couple of years ago. I now have a book out. I'm so it proud. is called Don't Bungee Jump Naked and Other Important Stuff. So, And this is the person right here who's going to win it. And that person is, my word, they've written an epistle <laughs> in the world. Jacqueline Davis McCrady. Those of us in North Texas are having, oh me, very hard time. Coldest mm -hmm. temperatures, everything. Hey, we know y'all are having a, a tough time in Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and our thoughts and prayers are with y'all. Believe me. Question, Tony? What's, what's that prize? What, what is she when is one of my books? Mm -hmm. She might prefer Liz's, but she's getting mine. And, and if you don't win, you jump naked. If you didn't win, you can stuff. go to storegeniarobertson.com. Okay. And and Tony, if um if anybody has it or says I really would rather have a DVD or whatever, we just switch it. It's not no protocol rules around here. Anybody saying something else? Okay. Jacqueline, we Jacqueline Davis McCrady. C-R-A-D-Y. We know y'all are having a hard time in Texas and you, we're thinking about you. And uh, it's tough to go through it. But like Liz says, if you can find any fum humor, I've always said too, Liz, it won't solve our problems, but it sure helps us attack them and get through them if we can. Absolutely. So do you, a lot of people ask, so let me ask you, I know my answer and I think I know yours. Do you believe God has a sense of humor? Guaranteed. He absolutely. <laughs> has a sense of humor. A couple of reasons. First of all, um, we are made in his image. So he has much that we don't have, but we can't have anything he doesn't have. If we're made in his image, it all started with him. So since we love to laugh, we can just assume, rightly so, that God has a sense of humor. And I think he made us just to entertain himself, because can you imagine anything funnier than people? No. So <laughs> I also think there's lots of humor in the Bible that people don't necessarily see. It's like when Aaron said to Moses, well, everybody threw the gold in the fire and out came this calf, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure it did. Just so funny to me. My favorite bad girl, by the way, is, is a, I think is a funny story in the Bible. And it's a story of the woman at the well. You heard of her, Jeannie? Yeah, of course. Well, Samaritan woman. 
first of all, she's a talker. So I'm loving already a sister who likes to talk. And she says to Jesus, um, how is it you can ask me for a drink? I love that. He meets her to well ask for, she's like, how can you ask me for a drink? I'm a Samaritan woman. You're a Jew. You shouldn't be asking me for a drink. And he's so clever. He says, oh, but if you knew the gift of God, well, she wasn't asking for a gift, but now he's offered her one. And so she's immediately interested. And he said, he would have given you living water. And she's like, wow, where can I get this water? Because I don't want to keep coming back to this well every day. See, she didn't want to go to the well because everybody talked about her. She was a woman with a past. She had had five husbands and the man she was living with at the moment, well, she was living with, okay? And um, what I love is in the middle of their conversation, Jesus says to her, go call your husband and come back. Oh, she's now caught. And she says, sir, I have no husband. And I just love it. I mean, it was just one of those kind of cover up lines. He says, what you have said is right. You have no husband, but you've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. And her response is, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. I just think that's hysterical. It's like she didn't panic and say, oh, no, I've been caught in sin. It's just like, clever you. You knew that. <laughs> I think it's you amazing. remember um, Bob Murphy. Patrick, oh, you remember Bob Murphy? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, from yeah. Nacogdoches, Texas. Nacogdoches, Texas. Yep. It was bit off. Yes, I remember. He, he used to have the <laughs> he, he used to have the funny line. He said he, he knew God has a sense of humor because he created the Texas legislature, which could be, <laughs> that joke could be shifted to Washington as far as I'm concerned, all of them up there. But Patrick, can you get ready to sing that, that song I asked you to sing today? In sure. A few minutes? And in to. the meantime, I will ask Liz another question out of the yellow bowl right here. See what the question is. And it is Betsy Leopold Johnson. Betsy Leopold Johnson. Question. Is there something that you take with you, Liz, every time you travel? Name a place on your bucket list that you have not had a chance to go to yet. And um, thanks for everything you do. People Sweet. all appreciate it. So where would you want to go? I haven't got an answer of what I take with me, um, except the usual stuff. Nothing, nothing special. I never but run back. <laughs> Uh, where would I love to go? I have never been to Italy. So Italy is really high on my list. Been there? I've been to Italy, but I haven't been to Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, do you know Charles Barkley? Do you know anybody named Charles Barkley? You I, don't? I was prepared to answer that question. No, I have no connections with Charles Who Barkley. Who you, oh, sorry. Patrick? She's heard the... She's Oh, she's, she's seen the sorry. questions. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm, I'm just looking for somebody that can introduce me. He went, He was a basketball player at Auburn. Irrelevant. But had you known him? Oh, ho, ho. So Patrick's going to sing a song called Good. The Baptist Prayer Chain. I'll let you introduce it. And we'll, and we'll do more prizes and everything else. Take it away, Patrick. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I wrote this song for, and we'll dedicate it to my mother and her Saturday night poker club also known as her Bible study. There's a tie that binds the South together. It's there for you if you're in distress or pain. It goes on and on forever. It's the washed in the blood, pray for your brother. All saints lifting up each other. John 3, 16, praise Jesus. Southern Baptist Church prayer chain. <laughs> It's there for you at most any hour. Healing's but a phone call away. No escaping from the wonder working power. Of the washed in the blood, pray for your brother. All saints lifting up each other. John 3, 16, praise Jesus. Southern Baptist Church prayer chain. If your best friend's nephew's doing time or the bunco group drinks too much wine, church ladies hit the phone, then hit their knees. From indigestion to insurrection, it's a hedge of heavenly protection. From the washed in the blood, pray for your brother. All saints lifting up each other. John 3, 16, praise Jesus. Southern Baptist Church prayer chain. 
<laughs> Sunday night church service is over. Dawn breaks and the morning calls begin. By the time the second cup of coffee's down, a dragnet spread across the town. From the washed in the blood, pray for your brother. All saints lifting up each other. John 3:16, praise Jesus. Southern Baptist Church prayer chain. Did you hear that Francine's husband left her? Miss Vogel passed to the hereafter. Ruby's daughter's in the family way. Frank's grandson got caught smoking pot. Bob Slocum's best bird dog got shot. For all these things, dear Lord, we humbly pray. The good word says we must bear witness. Even if we're in each other's business, our Christian duty demands faithfulness. After all, it's not gossip if it's a prayer request from the washed in the blood pray for your brother all saints lifting up each other john 3 16 praise jesus southern baptist church prayer chain all right yay patrick i like the line zeus says it's not gossip if it's a if it's a prayer request oh boy. I like the whole song thank you all right here we go another question from y'all for liz curtis Higg. and liz we had a lot of people unbelievable heathens i'm sure who hadn't heard of you but now they <laughs> now they have because you're out there doing good things but not making people feel bad about themselves and i love that joyce cooper ross asks this is always fun on the porch do do you and liz still get nervous I'd be a wreck doing what y'all do. Oh, well, yeah. Do I, you? I, well, you I, have thousands in front of you. I know. I, I would say I get excited and it's a fine line between nerves and excitement. So, yeah, but I, I still, the butterflies are there just flying in formation, but I, yeah. And I'll be, it'll be interested to see since I've been home so much. When I go back out in the road in April, I'm intrigued to see whether I get nervous before I go on stage. The thing is, as soon as you see everybody open your mouth and they laugh, it's all good. It's like, if I was nervous, it's gone. One big laugh, that yep. will, that'll that do it. Uh, I have always found, I always took December off. I've just stopped. You know, I, Once you've been in the airport, they're playing Christmas songs, you just don't do that again. And um, I found in that first speech back every January, you had to think a little more. It, the one-liners didn't just flop out there as quickly as they had others. So, so you'll be great in April. So you're starting back in April. I've been doing the theater shows, not like I was doing, but um, you know. So I see a little top, little light at the end of the tunnel out there. Yeah, see a, a little bitty one. So if I've had you had any, are you taking the shots? Oh yeah, I had one and no problem. Next one coming up in a couple of weeks. And then I, I think it just, you know, makes you feel a little safer there. So yeah. I've, I've had my two. Left brain's had two. Patrick, Good. you're too young. Tony's had two. Jane's had two. Okay. Next pandemic. Okay, now here we go in the next pandemic. Okay, Dave Pummel, P-U-M-M-I-L-L. -L. Liz, who is the, I, I this will who is the funniest girl in the Bible? Right. Well, I would have said um, the Samaritan woman would definitely be up there because of the way that she responded to Jesus over and over. Let me see if I can think of another funny because a lot of their stories, well, they don't start out funny, but they end well. I'll say that much, but I'll, I'll think on if there's another funny girl in the Bible. Believe me when I tell you, I have looked for her for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you know, know, you wrote the one about the queen, and I thought she was writing about me. Oh, it was I'm the Queen of Sheba. So <laughs> I know it, it was work. Queen of Sheba. Sorry. Right, here comes that. another another question. I'm just going to see what it is, and these are all questions about you. So as you can see, we could go for hours. Okay, Liz. Well, this is, you may have covered it. What inspired you to write about the? women of the Bible. Well, now I see what she means because laughing, your first books were laughing, laughing, laughing. You even wrote about me one time and I loved it. While I, shepherds washed their flocks. I mean, these are all funny. Then you went to, I remember you said one time 
And I thought this was funny, but I read this one, Mixed Signals that took place in Abdington, Virginia. And I, you said you were going to write titillating Christian romance novels. Right. And I said, mm, this is not going to be any fun, Liz. And yet uh, they were. They were just great. But there was a thing. But then you went into books of the Bible and the women of the Bible and all of those and, and wrote them in a way people could understand so the question was what inspired you to do it what made you make that switch from being does dinner in a bucket count to something <laughs> else yeah well the funny thing is I, I have always taught sunday school classes on women of the bible since about 1990 or so and uh, so i've always loved the women of the bible they fascinated me but the book was born on the platform it was 1998. I was speaking in Michigan with another speaker, a very serious speaker. This often happens to me. They'll have a serious speaker in me, you know, just kind of balances things out. And she got up and said, I'm going to write a book about women of the Bible. Pause. Of course, I'll only write about the good ones. And it was just like, bam, a bolt of lightning. And I thought, oh, perfect. So when I got up, I said off the top of my head, well, that's great. Then I'll write a book called bad girls of the Bible. I mean, it just fell out and a thousand women burst into laughter. And I said, Lord, is that you? Cause that <laughs> might, I did. So yeah. I called my publisher from backstage and I said, would you be willing to publish a book called bad girls of the Bible? Long silence on the other end. They said, you better send us a chapter. Let's see what it looks like. This is back in the fax machine days. And so I, I type up the, the chapter and I fed it into my fax and it's coming out the other end in Colorado Springs. And before I fed the last page in, they'd already been reading and they called me and said, we love this, keep writing. And so that's how it happened. Crazy, right? And uh, I, I love teaching the Bible and I still love having fun. And why not? You know, the two are not opposite ends of the of of life you know one is not sad and one's happy there's a lot of joy in the bible there's that's why they call it good news so you know it works for me anyway <laughs> but you and i both know too because i've seen you in front of thousands thousands of women sitting there and uh, uh men too but mostly you do the women and um you can't keep them in the palm of your hand without some humor. I, I mean, you cannot, you could tell them and everything that you're saying would be true and it's very nice, but if they're not laughing, you're going to lose them. And you've always known that you had yeah. some of the funniest stories I've ever, ever heard. And, uh, and, and it's the way you tell them and now to entwine them. And these people just, uh, you want to give away an, another bad, how many have we given away? Three matter go ahead yes by all means this is gonna be, i'm drawing again for liz's book um the bad bad girls of the bible okay you ever have somebody that's all into feminism and say you should say bad women oh yes i've had many people uh unhappy with the use of girls absolutely i have <laughs> well but we know what you mean okay when w-y-n-n Datilio, D A T I L L I O. Win. Don't know where you where you live, but you have just won Liz's book, and she'll sign it to whomever you want. Let Tony know, and I'll put this down here. Did you get that name, Tony? All right. Here goes another one of mine. Remember, I talked to you about this book a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You recommended some good advice. I think Al might have even called you, but we thank you. What you saying, Patrick? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, he said I wasn't holding it up. And then this is about a bad girl of a speaking profession. Not really. <laughs> no. Okay. And the winner is, <laughs> who knows, the winner of my book. I hope you all already. Susie, S-U-Z-I, Mental. And this is so bad because it says I love her books. I think she's one of your fans. But Susie, now you got my book. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Yep. M E N N E L L. So write Tony T O N I at genierobertson.com and tell her, and we'll ship that out. And if you want something else, you can ask for it too. All right, another question for Liz. This is so much fun. Tony, you got any questions over there? 
Stepping on this on cord. Okay. Suzanne Day. Would you tell Tony that I bought a used electric typewriter yesterday at Goodwill? It works super well. I may need to buy a supply of ribbons. If for those of you that don't know, Tony still uses an electric typewriter, but you have a computer. Yes, and uh, Liz just mentioned a fax machine. It sits next to my typewriter <laughs> <laughs> in my but, office. <laughs> but you get things out. I love it. Yeah. You get things out. That's right. I, no, I don't use a fax machine often, but every once in a while, some people have to borrow it and say, uh, I need to fax something. Could I use your fax machine? So, oh, yes, I do, I do still have Are that. Are you poking fun at me? Yeah, well, you and Patrick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you both qualify. <laughs> well, for y we do have an extra. Show, you, show Tony on the end of the. What were you saying, Tony? I interrupted. There, you. Uh, I don't know if Liz knows this or wants to reveal this, but people have asked what website you order your wigs from do you yes of course I do. It's best wig outlet.com so best wig outlet.com no i don't get any kind of uh, remuneration and all my wigs are um oh my goodness i just lost her name very famous um actress raquel welch yeah, all my, I, I I swear by her wigs. And I have lots more if you need to see them. <laughs> Wait, she's opening up the closet. Oh, look, well, there it is. <laughs> and I've got a whole shelf of them back here. Looks like a guest. But, but here's the thing, girls, you don't want to pay full price. You wait till they have the 30% off sale. And if they don't have it today, they will. So just wait and then get a deal. Why not? But yeah, I get them all from there. I take them out of the box, put them on. Boom, we're done fun gosh just think of the time you save I, it's on the road it's heaven you know i'm almost my hair is not coming back after the chemo which if you're having chemo sisters do not worry that that's going to happen to you i don't know why it happened to me it might also have been the weight loss but i just never got my hair back now i don't want it back because this is so much easier <laughs> it looks fantastic question tony this is uh People are having trouble with Tony at JeannieRobertson.com. Not everybody, but a few people. So I'm t I'm writing them back if they tell me that here. But Patrick, how about putting up Tony Listen at Outlook.com as a another. second email they could try if they're getting a throwback from the other one. I don't know why that would be, but I don't want them to I not be able to get through. I wonder if they're spelling Jeannie with an I. You know, no, it does no. that. Maybe, maybe. Okay. But uh, th anyway, at whatever reason, just if they'll use that one, it seems to work all the time. So, OK, Liz, what what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Wow. You know, that's a question in the midst of the cancer trip that I couldn't have answered. You know, in fact, I was nervous to answer. I suspect I'll be doing exactly what I'm doing now. Why wouldn't I be? You mm -hmm. are. <laughs> oldest person on the planet is still going around <laughs> no you are not the oldest person on the planet i have lots of women that i have looked up to for years you're one of them who are still doing the do i love it your your uh, tour is called still rocking right yeah well yeah. i'm in oh. a rocking chair so hey <laughs> and you know the, my friends are familiar with our mutual friend glenna salisbury Oh. who is a, a past she's jerry's age on up in and she's very active naomi is i mean we've got a lot of us out there that are speaking Jeannie seeley do you know Jeannie seeley from the grand old opry she's oh, no. oh she's the first one that got in the first woman or something she's wow. out there all the time going on cruises grand old opry cruises all that kind of stuff so there's a lot of people that are still plugging along all right this one and i'm having a ball Colleen Vargas. Okay. Okay. This is a, okay, Liz. Colleen Vargas. Liz, you are at such peace each time I listen to you. How do you do it? Reading the word of God is first. Is there anything else you do for enjoyment? Do you garden? Do you bake? Do you keep a Bible journal? What do you do with your time? Okay. Other than your right. work. Right. Okay. I took up gardening this when the pandemic hit spring came and we had to stay home so i got real into gardening um but then then fall and winter came so then it became house plants here i'll show you my favorite 
It's a fitonia. Isn't she cute? I have, I have a fitonia. I probably have 120 houseplants all over this house. There is not a room without them. Bill is afraid of them. <laughs> he is. I keep coming home with new ones. But um, I... I love green things. I love helping them grow. And if they die, and sometimes houseplants do, you know, it's sad, but it it's not sad. Um, so that, and I have two crazy cats. Um, they're going to be screaming outside the door here any minute, I'm sure. Samson and Boaz. Samson and Boaz. Yeah, that's right. That's I, her name. They want to know why, which one you like best. Oh, my word. I can't tell. They would hear me, I'm sure. I like them both. I do. They're both, they're twin boys and, and they're equally adorable and ornery. So it's all good. But um, Bill hates them both. So, you know, I have to balance it out with loving them both. That's right. It's true. So, so you um, do those, you, you, would you keep, if the world got back to normal, whatever that's going to be, would you then go and plant all these green plants and do all that kind of stuff? I mean, did it grab you or just you just got through the COVID? Well, you know, it's interesting. I do love it, but I probably would be making enough money again to pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Whoa, what a novel idea, Patrick, making more money. What a oh. novel idea. We'll have to think about that. Okay, sure. that was a good question. I'll put that in down. That was a super question. Okay, it's time for me to give away. We give away one every week, the audio book. Ooh. Seven hours, lives seven hours and 20 minutes. Um, and we did it in a much bigger closet that you and I were in that day. Patrick was recording. I had made our son Beaver's bedroom into a closet. And here it is. So if you win this and you say, well, I don't do, you know, well, take it to the nearest home for people that are having to stay there till they can get out of the COVID and make a lot of people happy. So here's going to be the winner of that. They're coming out of this bucket. I got so many buckets. I don't know what it is. And I can't see a clock. I don't know. All right. This is the one. Linda Anderson. Linda Anderson. I know Linda Anderson. And I know this is who they are because I said to her, how are your people doing in Missouri? Because Missouri got hit too. You know who this is? Yes, she's family. Well, she's not family. She's in-law family. <laughs> Linda and Jean Anderson live here in the county and their son is married to my niece. We're not going to disqualify her. Of course not. She won this fair and square. How much time do we have left? <laughs> oh, you have, you need to do one more Liz book. I know. Okay. Tony I keeps up with things. Okay. I bet Linda's sitting there thinking, I would rather have Liz's book. <laughs> no, <laughs> <I'm> too, bad. <laughs> too bad. All right. Here's going to be. Uh, another winner of Liz's book. Okay. And it is Karen Proctor Barwick from Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. I look forward to meeting Liz Curtis Higgs on the back porch this Saturday. You have had wonderful guests and I'm sure she will be awesome. And yes, that is true. So you do your Monday show and this is Karen Proctor Barwick. So she gets one of Liz's books too. You do that show. Do, do you do another show? Do you just, you're doing Monday? It's Mondays. Um, I was doing several and I may start up another one again, but um, I have a, a, a job, if you can imagine it. <laughs> I took over a year ago, not took over. Actually, the job didn't exist. I went to my church and said, I think we could really use a director of women's ministry. And I would love to do that. Could I do that? And they wow. said, well, sure. And then COVID hit. So what I thought I'd be doing, because I love to speak, teach, and organize events. Well, guess what? In COVID, I couldn't do any of those things. No organizing of events, no teaching with groups. And so it's been such an exciting learning curve for me to do to lead ministry um, from home. Basically, everybody's working from home. Slowly, we're going back to church. But um, yeah, it's, it's been, I kind of had to make up the job and then make up how to do it and then figure out how to do it during COVID. And all of it has been honestly a very exciting journey. I know a couple of my Christchurch sisters are watching today and they, 
they have made it possible for me to do what I love to do, even if I had to learn how to do it in a new way. <laughs> so it's been crazy. Well, I'm probably not as active in my church as you are. And um, although I, we're both Methodist. We they are. Take, they take those who are very active and the, the traveling and then with Jerry being sick and all, it's just, it's just been different. But um, I think it's admirable that with your fame, uh, in your circles and what you're doing to change the lives of so many people that you still are active in your church and offered to do that job. That's, that's you, Liz. It just goes, I, I just am so blessed to have known you all these years. It's been so much fun. You asked me to join y'all's little summit sister group. And I said, are y'all real? I said, I said to you, are there six of you, five of you? And I said, well, do y'all talk about deep subjects and, and <laughs> problems and all of that? And you, they, they said, yes, you do. And I said, I don't know if I do that as much as y'all do. And y'all never called again. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all still good friends. <laughs> Such good friends. Such good friends, Jeannie. You have always been an honorary Summit sister. So oh, you good. anytime. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I can be honorary. I'm good at being honorary. By the way, you have an honorary doctorate degree. <laughs> oh, and Jeannie, I do from Georgetown College, to be clear, not Georgetown University in Washington, Georgetown College here in Kentucky. That is Bill's alma mater. That is my son Matthew's alma mater. I wrote about that school anonymously at the front of my book, Slightly Bad Girls of the Bible. Oh, and gosh. And Jeannie, I don't know how, do I even have time to tell you this? Yes. Well, I, <laughs> I talked about how this is terrible, but how disappointed that my son chose that school because I had much bigger plans for him and a much bigger college that also offered him a position, you know, a, a slot. But he turned that one down and he took this one here in Kentucky. And so I whined about it and had a hissy fit about it. And I got over it. And of course, he went there, did very well there and met his bride um, here in Kentucky. And so it's the best thing ever that he went to that school. But in that book, I confessed I was not impressed. And then they didn't know that. Then they called me and said, we would like to give you an honorary doctorate. Oh <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my word, if they ever figure out that's the school I was talking about, I am toast. So now it's too late. They can't take it back, but, but it was actually that school. Well, I told a lie when I was questioned as Miss North Carolina. I've told that story on here, but you know how they say, we're going to ask you a serious question and a humorous question. And I blanked and I started just telling, just answering the question beautifully. I might add, I won. And so now after I've told that story here. I'm afraid they're going to tell me and take it back from me. What do you, because they're reclaiming everything and taking it down. What's the current word? Cancel culture. Cancel culture. So you better be careful who you tell what you wrote in that school. They'll take your honorary degree back. No, they never will. I can assure you, but I knew your children when they were little. And so it's great. Let me ask you one more question. Till how, how much time we have Patrick? Uh, we have two minutes. Somebody said, why don't you just put a big clock up there? Because it never can keep it running and all that. I'll take my jobs. Barbary, Barbary Carnegie. I heard Liz at a conference in Branson several years ago and enjoyed her stories. I've also read many of her books. Okay. Well, what has Liz been doing during this shutdown year? She's been apparently planting mediocre plants. <laughs> and, she's Very and she's organizing all this stuff at her church which is not happening this year I, she's getting a lot of credit for all this stuff so can you say that you've done anything else during this shutdown year that you haven't told oh, us about i'm writing of course got a book underway it'll be a year before it comes out and uh, and doing all the facebook stuff which is so fun this has been such fun i just love the live element it just works you know, you just, you never know what's going to come out of somebody's mouth. That's partly why they watch. Like last week with you in that car, who could turn that off? That was hysterical. <laughs> who could have gotten us out of there quicker? We all just looked. It was wild to say the least. Um, but the, is there any, do, can you give away the name of the new book yet? Or do you want to, is you have to hold it back? Oh, I have to hold it back. You know how funny that is because I might change it. But 
I'll tell you off the air, as it were, and you'll giggle because the first chapter is called Still Rockin'. I had no idea oh, that good. was your name, but that's no. the first chapter is Still Rockin'. No, I call it Rockin' Humor, Still Rockin'. And we uh, last week in uh, Niceville, they had M&M's that had Keep Laughing, Jeannie Roberts, on an M&M, and wow. Keep Rocking, Still Rocking, all of these kind of things. So it, good luck with it. You'll be great. And and these, as I said, are just a um, just a little bitty bit of what you've produced and done. Here's the one I love, too. One size fits all and other fables. You are. <laughs> I remember that. That was, yep, that was my second book, and I interviewed you for it, and you had very erudite things to say. <laughs> Somebody put them on a web, on the website, and they, and they said, have you seen this written about you? And I looked at it and read it, and I said, yeah, kind of. And they said, well, it was in Liz's book. And then I remembered that you did, and I appreciate it. You're always yeah. helping people, and I'm one of the ones who's also benefited. And these people didn't get their questions answered because I was having too much fun asking you. But uh, will you come back sometime when you, yeah. you with something, and we'll just keep these questions for another time? All these stories I was ready to tell. I was afraid I'd have nothing to say, so I wrote down one line to remind me of stories to tell. So, yes, let's do it again. Well, wait a minute. Can you, can you take us out with one of them? What's the <laughs> one you wanted to tell? Well, sure. Somebody wanted to know, how do you turn a frown into a smile when you're having a bad day? And for me, I look for funny signs. Manhattan, Kansas, sign in the window of the Burger King, wanted part-time adult. I thought, what a <laughs> perfect job. When I'm feeling mature, I'll go to work. When I'm feeling childlike, I'll stay home. So many fun signs like that out there, friends. If you will just look for them, they'll cheer you up. Thank you, and you have cheered us up. We'll talk to you later, friend. Tell okay. Bill I said hey. And I you will. Know what? Tell the kids I remember them too, and now I know they're all grown up and gone, but uh, you're the epitome of you got it all because you, you're determined to do it the right way. Thanks a lot. Tell them I said hey. God Bye, bless you. Thank you. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson.